Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. So Allah Khan here. And today with something different, okay? This video is not for all of you. This video is for my friends, my batchmates, my class fellows, okay? Because in this video, I am going to solve an assignment, okay? We were given an assignment and that is what I am here for. To solve that assignment, okay? So this may include this includes questions on system properties which we have not seen in a great detail we will see it when the time comes but for now you if you don't you don't have to watch this video okay this is only for those people who have been assigned with this assignment especially this is for you yes i am a jamal okay so let's get going so we have basically two questions the first question is that we are given a function x of t so this is your question number one x of t is given so this is how it goes this is the time axis this is your x of t axis and how is this so this is one at zero one at zero and then it's in a linear fashion decreasing linear fashion till three so this is the question and it's zero on the negative side so this is your x of t okay now you are asked uh, to sketch you are asked to sketch uh, four different forms you have x of negative t uh, in part b you are asked to sketch x of t plus 2 in part c you have x of 2t plus 2 and finally in part d you have x of 1 minus 3d so these are what are asked okay so now if you have come along with me so the question number one is as simple as it looks part one part a says what x of negative t which means what this is time reversal or this is time inversion or time folding or whatever it is so what do you have in time reversal is you take a mirror image of the signal about the y axis so you take a mirror image about y axis so if i draw it over here this is now x of negative t this is the time axis so what do you have position 0 will stay at 0 position 3 will go to position negative 3 so this is if negative 3 this is 1 and it's now 0 on the positive side so this is part a of it part b x of t plus 2 so t plus 2 you have something in the brackets this is a time shift this is a time shift and what is this time shift if i said t plus k so t plus k x of t plus k this is a time shift towards left by k units okay and similarly if you have x of t minus k you have a shift towards right by k units in this case we have a shift towards left by two units so have a look if i draw it over here this is the time axis wait wait i drew it wrong well it's not that wrong no problem so if i say this is x of t plus 2 so have a look initially the point is 0 where it is starting so shift left towards 2 which means this would start at negative 2 this would go to 1 at negative 2 and then finally it is ending at 3 so shift it towards left by 2 units it will end at a positive 1 so this is your positive 1 the, the amplitude is 1 this is the second part of it for the third part the third part is x of t 2t plus 2 so you have part c x of 2t plus 2 so this involves both time shift and 2t so this means a time scale as well so this has a shift plus scale in what domain in the time domain not the amplitude so first let's say i go for the shift so it is x of 2t plus 2 so what would we have if you shift it so x of t 
is shifted to get a signal x of t plus 2 which I already have. This is x of t plus 2 in part 2. Okay. Now uh, we have to scale it. Now scale it. So what do you have in that case? You would have x of 2t plus 2. So what do you have now in this case 2t? So now the time you replace the time in the t plus 2 domain you replace the time t initially it was t now you have to replace it with 2t so what you do is have a look you take this point is negative 2 where it starts you basically take the starting and the ending point so if you take negative 2 equal to 2t so this would imply the new point is negative 1 fine which means that now this signal would start at negative 1 so if I if I draw it over here this is your time axis this is x of 2t plus 2 so now it would start at negative 1 at negative 1 its amplitude would be 1 and where would it end so it would end at the final point is 1 so you put 1 equal to 2t which implies you get a t equal to 1 over 2 so it would end at t equal to 1 over 2 so the signal has been compressed in the time domain it has been compressed we saw that when the value of alpha this is value of alpha this 2 so when this alpha is greater than 1 you have a time compression and similarly if this alpha is less than 1 the the, mag, the amplitude the magnitude so you had that uh, expansion when it the magnitude is less than 1 whatever it is so you know this okay so this is x of 2 t plus 2 now the final case is uh, part d so part d is what part d we have 1 minus 3t so i can write it as x of minus 3t plus 1 isn't it so so have a look again it has time shift which is 1 units it has time scale which is 3 units and it has a negative sign which means it has a time reversal as well so if i shift the unit shift first shift x of t which means that the next signal that I get would be x of t plus 1. Isn't it so? So x of t plus 1 means what? That you have to shift the signal towards the left by a 1 unit. Or you can also do it by another approach. As I did over here. You, you replace t plus 1 equal to 0. Okay. So you get a t equal to negative 1. If you say t plus 1 is equal to 0, so you get a t is equal to negative 1 where it would start. So if I draw it over here, this is t, this is x of t plus 1. So t equal to negative 1 it would start now and where it would end? So t plus 1 is equal to 3. So you have a t is equal to 2. It would end at t is equal to 2 the amplitude is 1 this is x of t plus 1 you can do it each and every point like this ok you replace it with this value but this is not a signal and system approach a student studying signal and system knows that if this is x of t plus 1 this means that x of t has been shifted towards the left by one unit so you don't need to do it point wise is that ok now we have shifted it first now I scale it which means I have x of 3 t plus 1 so uh, you don't have to confuse it okay over here this you're already done now you have x of 3t plus 1 now what do you do you multiply 3t with each value so you have a negative 1 so now you put 3t equal to negative 1 which means the next point is negative 1 over 3 so this point would now be located at t is equal to negative 1 over 3 so if this is the graph, this is now let's say negative 1 over 3, over here the amplitude would be 1. And similarly now 2, so you put 3t equal to 2, so you get this point equal to 2 by 3, which means the point which was initially located at 2 is now located at 2 by 3. So this is now the signal waveform, this is 1, this is the waveform from 3t plus 1. And finally, finally you have time reversal. This was shift I did first, then I scaled it and now I will do the time reversal. 
and the reversal we know from the uh, basic sense of this example also that this is just the mirror image about the the, the, the y axis so you have it like this this is your time axis this would be x of negative 3t plus 1 so have a look the point which was initially at 1 over 3 negative 1 over 3 would now be at 2 by 3 so this is your 2 by 3 point like this and the point which was at 2 by 3 would now come to negative 1 over 3 and this would be joined by the straight, same straight line the amplitude would be the same one this is the 4 graph okay this is for part b the final graph the final graph this one is for part a uh, this is for part c and this one is finally for part d is that okay let me have a sip of water and now we continue to the second question okay so i remove this all right now uh, to question number two so the system is specified to have the following input output relationship this is your question number two you are given a system to be y of t equal to sine of t into x of t sine of t into x of t and you have to do what you have to check characterize the system behavior based on memory linearity let me write all the system properties basically memory uh, linearity c is what time invariance stability time invariance stability and the next would be what it would be causality Invertibility and causality. Invertibility and causality. Well, today is the last day to submit this assignment. You will get it in an hour, okay? This is 2.57 right now. So, till most probably till 4.30 it would be uploaded. Alright. So, memory. The first case is memory. So, you know that for the memory, uh, what is the condition? That if... Uh, it has any past or future values involved so <clears throat> sorry that is the case of a memory system and past or future how do we determine past or future so those are basically by the shifted versions x of t plus 1 or x of t minus 1 so we do not have them in this system so which means that this is a memory system so part a is that this is a memory system why because it only depends on present values you give it a present value of t and it will just give you y of t at that particular value it do not have a future value involved it do not have a past value involved so it has no memory this is a memory system part b b is on linearity now you know for linearity what do you have you have is a principle of superposition principle of superposition and it consists of two properties again a and b so let's say i have it over here as one and two and those are additivity and additivity and homogeneity no, yes so the first let's say i check for additivity so what do you have in additivity if you sum the outputs and if you sum the inputs first so those will be the same so have a look you need to know about the system behavior in a detail now what is the behavior of this system the behavior of this system is that if you give it any input x of t it will multiply sine of t with it that is your system behavior sine of t has nothing to do with the input it is just the coefficient of this particular value particular input so x of t is your input so have a look now if you give it what uh input x1 of t so the output would be y1 of t x1 of t is given to the system the output would be y1 of t and this would be what this would be sine of t into x1 of t fine 
Now if you give it another input x2 of t, you give it to the system, you have an output y2 of t, this is sine of t into x2 of t. Fine? Now if you add the two outputs, you first gave it to the system, now you are adding it. So you have what? You have y1 of t plus y2 of t. So sine of t I can take common, this is sine of t. And in the brackets you would have x1 of t plus x2 of t. This is when you add the outputs after passing them through the system. Part 2. This was part 1. Part 2 is what? Part 2 is that you first add the inputs. So if you first add the inputs, let's say I have x1 of t plus x2 of t. Now you've added the system, you have added the input, now you give it to the system. This is the same system. So what does the system do? It multiplies sine of t with the input. So sine of t is multiplied with the input and the input is x1 of t plus x2 of t. So which means the additivity property has been satisfied. The next property is of homogeneity. What do you do in homogeneity? You give the input to the system. You have an input x of t. You give it to the system. It gives you the output y of t which in this case is sine of t into x of t. Fine. Now you multiply it with a constant k. You multiply it with a constant k to give you k times sine of t into x of t. Is that okay? This is step number one. For, for, this, for checking the step number two, what do you do? You have the input x of t. First you multiply k with it, a constant. And so you have k times x of t. This is now your input which you feed to the system. And the system behavior is what? To multiply sine of t with the input. So sine of t multiplied k times x of t. So have a look. This is the same as this. So which means the homogeneity property has been satisfied. So part B says what? Part A stated that it was a memory system. Part B is a linearity. So they state as this is a linear system. Now, the next is on time variance. So, part C is on time variance. So, what do you have in time variance? That first you have an input, you pass it through the system and then you delay the output. Fine. Now, in the second step you do what? You first delay the input and then you pass it through the system. Now, if both the outputs are same, the system is going to be time invariant. If they are not the same, the system is time variant. Now this reflects with that if you have an input, you have a delay in it, so the same delay should be reflected in the output. This is what a time invariance means. So have a look now. Part C. Okay. So let's say we had x of t the input, pass it through the system. The output is sine of t multiplied x of t. Now you delay the output. So delay the output means that t minus t naught we have. So you have a delay. So you have what? You have t over here. So you will have a t minus t naught. You have an x of t minus t naught. This is what? You have delayed the output. Fine. Now the input side. First you delay the input and then you pass it to the system. So if x of t is your input, you delay it first and delay it first to get an x of t minus t naught. Now this is the, the signal, okay? Now you pass it through the system. So now if you pass it through the system, we know that the behavior of the system is what? To multiply sine with the input signal. So you have sine of t multiplied with the input signal is x of t minus t naught. So this is now the input delay. So have a look, the input delay, the output delay is not reflected, they are not the same. So what do you have is that this is a time variant system. This is a time variant system. Is that okay? Part D for stability. Now you know for stability we need to check for the BBO criteria. BBO criteria is what? For a bounded input, you have a bounded output. Isn't it so? So let's say we give it a bounded input and uh, wait the blue. Okay. Let's say the bounded input given is 
a step signal say the bounded input given is u of t so what do you have this would imply that y of t is sine of t into u of t isn't it so so now this would give us this could have two possibilities that is it could be sine of t or this could be zero so this would be sine of t for t greater than equal to zero this would be zero for t less than zero because the unit step function does not exist when t is less than zero so have a look you have a bounded output for a bounded input this is a bounded input this is a bounded output so which means that the people criteria has been satisfied so you can say that this is a stable system let's say i check for any other value say for a dc value x or uh, let's say x of t is a dc value equal to a so for this what do you have y of t would be equal to a times sine of t now you know that the the, the range of sine is between negative 1 and positive 1 so if you are multiplying a with it the range would now be from negative a to positive a so again you have what for a bounded input you have a bounded output so which means the people criteria is satisfied similarly you can have any other bounded input for this so this would tell you that this system is a stable system is that okay now i need some space so i will remove this part okay so part number e is on what it is on invertibility uh where so i should write it over here invertibility now for an invertible system what do you have you have a one-to-one -one mapping which means for a discrete input you have a discrete value of output fine so we check this so if you have x of t is the input and your y of t is the output so if x of t is 0 y of t is 0 x of t is 1 y of t is sine of t x of t is 2 output is 2 sine of t similarly you go on and on but but have a look we don't know the value of t is equal to 0 we don't know the value of t where these are occurring so t is equal to unknown let's say over here t is equal to 1 sine of t and over here let's say t is equal to 2 this is sine of t let's say they are both equal so you cannot so you will see that this is an unvertible system but we don't know if the values of sine of t are equal to 2 sine of t we don't know it which means if we don't know the value of t we cannot comment over here we cannot comment like this so such time so such in such examples when you have a little complexity involved so you do what you 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 take some standard signals as x of t let's say over here i take it as the impulse signal over here say my x of t is impulse signal so when i give it to my system y of t this would equal sine of t multiplied by impulse delta t isn't it so so sine of t multiplied delta of t is equal to is equal to what you know this ever jama it's zero right it is zero why because this is the sampling property of the impulse function that when you have a function x of t multiplied uh, with delta of t minus t1 this would equal x of t1 multiplied delta of t minus t1 so over here we had t1 equal to 0 and sine of 0 is 0 isn't it so so this we took for delta of t now let's say for the second function i say that say x of t is 2 times delta of t so again you will have what y of t is sine of t into 2 times delta of t this would again be equal to 0 again using this property 2 would come out 2 multiplied 0 would give you a 0 of course if this is confusing you so this is like this oh. okay 
So, which means now that for different uh, functions, for different functions, delta of t to delta of t, we have the same answer, 0 and 0. So, which means that this is a non-invertible system. This is a non-invertible system. Is that okay? Now, for part number last, we need to check whether uh, the system is causal or non-causal. So, causality is what? Causal system is that system which is independent of the future value. Causal is that system which can depend on the past value plus it can depend on the present value. Similarly, you have non-causal system then. So, non-causal is a system which can depend on past value, it can depend on present value, it can depend on the future value. Even a single future value, that would be non-causal. And similarly, we have another system that is anti-causal. So, anti-causal system only depends on the future values. Now over here have a look, our function is x of t sine of t into x of t, it only depends on future, uh, on the present, x of t is a present value, so a present value is what, now, and it does not depend on any future value, so which means that this system, this particular system in our question is a causal system, and that's all about it. I hope you found this video helpful. So I would like you to like the video if you like it. If you don't, so don't like it. Okay. For me, that's all about it. That's all about your assignment. I hope you find it helpful. If you do, you remember me in your prayers. Okay. And you do like this video. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.